What's going on guys? In today's beginner's guide to Resolve 16, we're gonna take a look at the very basic workflow, the initial setup of the program, how to import your footage, a little bit of editing, and how to export your footage. I just wanna be able to get you from having a bunch of clips and for you to be able to put together a video. So this is, again, a very basic guide. If you are familiar with Resolve already, you can skip this video or better yet, you can recommend it to your friends, people that are in need or want to get started on a video editing program. And Resolve is probably the best program at the moment because it's free and it can do everything. So without any further ado, let's hop right into it. I am currently using the Studio 16 version. However, everything I'm showing you today, you can also do it with the free version. So right off the bat, you're gonna be presented with this window. It is the project window, and you're gonna see untitled project. Sometimes you might see this little tab on the left side, and you're gonna be highlighted with local database. You won't need to worry about that right now go ahead and close that off to make it look clean so you could either double click on entitled project or come down here and click on new project go ahead and name your project I'm gonna name it tutorial if this is your first time opening DaVinci Resolve yes it can look quite intimidating however I'm gonna help ease that for you you're gonna notice this little cog at the bottom right. Go ahead and click on that. On the side, you're gonna see master settings, timeline format. And this is something you want to do every single time you create a new project. You come in here, take a look at the timeline resolution. So if you recorded something in 4K or 1080p or 8K even, you come in here, click on this little arrow. You're going to be able to find either 1080p, Ultra HD, which is 4K or 8K. Go ahead and choose the appropriate resolution. And in terms of timeline frame rate, now here in the States, we use either 23.976 or 24 frames per second. Everywhere else in the world, 25 frames per second, I believe. Same thing for the playback frame rate. We're gonna skip video monitoring. Come down to optimize media and render cache. This part here will determine how smooth your timeline playback. It does not affect the exported footage. Keep that in mind. So if you have a fast computer, you can just leave everything the way it is. However, if you have a slower computer, first you can change the optimized media resolution to either half, quarter, 1 8th, 1 16th. It's really up to you. And as for optimized media format, I normally just go with DNX HRSQ or LB. But if you are on Mac, you will see ProRes. So either choose ProRes LT or ProRes Proxy. And same thing for the render cache format. Now, while you are editing, if the quality on screen that you see is too low, then you can raise it up one step at a time. You just come back into the project settings and raise the setting up one at a time and see how that affects your workflow. Keep in mind, the settings you change right here does not affect the quality of your export, your final product, working folders. Now, if you have a dedicated hard drive and it is fast, say SSD, then I highly recommend you change the location of this. But if not, you can just leave it the way it is. Okay, we are done for the master settings. We're gonna jump into image scaling and you are gonna look for input scaling. By default, I believe it's already in scale entire image to fit. If it's not, go ahead and choose scale entire image to fit. What this setting will help you is just in case you have imported footages that are different than your timeline resolution. For example, if you accidentally put your timeline as 1080p, but your footage is 4K or 8K, Resolve will help you scale that image. So whether it will shrink or enlarge your footage and still maintain the aspect ratio. Come down to output scaling, make sure it is the same as your input scaling. And one last thing, 
for this initial setup. You want to go up to DaVinci Resolve and go to Preferences. In here, you are gonna look for User, Project, Save, and Load. By default, the Live Save is not checked. I highly recommend you check Live Save. Sometimes we forget to save our project. Resolve will automatically save it for you. You can also set up project backups, but that's gonna be on a different video. Then you go ahead and click save. If you look at the bottom, you will notice these little icons. And the first one is media. This is where you import all of your clips. Find your folder, drag the clips, drop them in. Chances are you will have this little window pop up. Would you like to change your timeline frame rate to match with your clips? Just go ahead and click don't change. Remember in the initial setup, you have already set up your timeline frame rate. So just go ahead and click don't change. And what you can do is create folders. Right click in this master section and new bin. Bins are basically the same as folders. However, these bins are created within the project. So it does not create the folders outside in your Windows or Mac OS. I'm just going to call this footage, drop them into footage. I'm going to create another one called music and drop that in. Okay. And now you have a bin for your footage and a bin for your music. However, I'm going to show you a much better way of doing this is to be organized before you import these clips or music or artwork, anything in. So say these are all your clips, create those folders outside in your OS, create a folder called footage, drop those clips in, and I'll create another folder called music drop that in. It's a very good habit to have to keep everything organized. And then I can just take those folders and drop them into the master. Now, if you were to drop them into this area here, it would not carry over the folder structure. So you do want to drop them into the master section. And as you can see, it carries over the folder or the bins structure. It's just a quick tip to keep yourself organized. Now you have two editing pages. One is the cut page and the other one is edit page. The cut page is basically a simplified version of the edit page. I personally don't use this. However, I'm going to show you a few features that I like. For example, you can double click on one of your clip and it will show up in the window on the right side. Now I'm going to grab two of these files down to the timeline. This is one of the features that I really like is you can see an overall view of the whole timeline. As you can see on here, there are two separate clips on this timeline. And it's really cool once you have a lot of clips on here it's like a bird eyes view of your whole timeline now this button over here is to lock the playhead as you can see once you lock the playhead the playhead is right in the middle and you can scrub your footage left and right and in the section of this full view of the timeline what you can do is you can click anywhere in that timeline and it would jump your playhead to that specific location for example if i wanted to cut at this particular spot and get rid of whatever before the playhead you can use this button here or you can just use Control b or on mac it would be command b and press delete in this cut page what i really like is it will automatically close the gap for you now let's jump on to the edit page in this edit page, I'm going to show you very basic functionality in order for you to put together a video. Right on top, if you do not see your footage, this button is called Media Pool and you can toggle in order for you to see your media. If you want to see your folder structure, there is the bin list button right over here. And in here, you can see the folder structures. I will cover power bins and smart bins in a different video. Once you drop in a few clips, you're going to notice there is this file called timeline one. This is basically your timeline file to make my editing flow a little bit better. There is this little button up on the top left. You can toggle between that in order to see the whole bottom timeline. And on to the right side, there is a mixer button. This is to control the audio of each tracks. And this button is metadata. And here you can check out the information of your media, whether it was filmed in 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second, 4K, 1080p, etc. 
Okay, the next button is called the inspector. Here you can see the attributes of your video and audio. You can do a lot with the inspector. You can change the zoom position. I will not cover every single one of these. Again, it's because I just want to keep this video super simple, very basic beginner's guide. If you would like to know more in details of each of these attributes, please let me know in the comment and I will make a video for you. This little icon onto the right side here, this is to expand those attributes. Normally, I would turn this off because I want to have as much space for my timeline as possible. It makes my editing workflow a lot faster. Coming down here to the middle, there is this little magnet. This is to snap the clip. If you have it toggled on, as you notice that when you bring a clip closer to another clip, it will automatically snap right into place. This is extremely useful when you want Resolve to close any gaps. And the little chain right next to that is called link selection. The video and audio of this clip here are linked together and you can unlink them by toggle this little chain thingy. From there, you can move your video anywhere without affecting the audio and vice versa. You can move your audio without affecting the video. And these three buttons right over here are new to Resolve 16. A very quick way for you to zoom in and zoom out of your timeline. This first button here, you can see your whole timeline. It's the full zoom. The one next to it is detail zoom. So it will zoom really close to where the playhead is. And the third one is called custom zoom. If you have adjusted the zoom yourself, it will memorize the placement of your zoom. And now if you toggle between these three, it will automatically jump to the zoom setting that you have set. Another really cool thing that you might want to check off, go up to the timeline menu, go down to selection follows playhead. What this does for you is if you have it selected, wherever you place the playhead, that corresponding video clip will be selected for you. And as you can see, when you have it toggled off, it doesn't matter where you place the playhead, none of the corresponding clips will be selected. I normally have the selection follow the playhead because a lot of times when I'm editing I want to change the attribute of that clip that I am currently on right on the spot. It just makes my editing workflow a lot faster. As for the Fusion page, I'm not going to go over this page at all because it's a whole different ballgame. You could do so much in here. You could do special effects. You can customize your own artwork, animations, all sorts of things. As for the color page, again, I'm not gonna go in details of this page because this page is of its own. Colorist love this page. I love this page. But basically, this page is for you to color correct, color grade your footages. And second to last page here is called Fairlight. And this is where you have full control of your audio. It's basically an audio editing program within Resolve itself. This is what I use to record the audio for this tutorial. So last but not least, this is the delivery page. This is where you export your video. So right off on top here, this icon all the way up to the top is where you can expand your settings. And this icon over here are clips. So basically what it does is it will show you all of the clips that you currently have to be exported. Now I highly recommend for a beginner to just use YouTube or Vimeo's standard preset because I am going to make a separate video specifically showing you the best export setting for YouTube. So hypothetically, if you are gonna upload this video to YouTube, just click on YouTube and you can choose whether if it's you want to export in 1080p or 4K, etc. You come down here and you name your file and then you choose the location where you want to save your file. And at the bottom, click on add to render queue. Once that is done, you could just click on start render and it will export your video. And that is it. Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. I hope it was useful and if it did please give it a like and share it with others if you have any questions or if you would like me to make some other tutorials please let me know in the comments below and if you are new here consider subscribe and on that note stay safe stay creative and i will see you guys in the next video bye bye